Tick, tick, boom. <clears throat> tick, tick, boom is the story of Jonathan Larson, who's played by Andrew Garfield and is a 29-year-old musical writer living in New York City. John has been writing a rock musical called Superbia for the last eight years in the hopes of getting it in front of a producer that will fund it and help him make the big time. However, John feels like the world is crashing around him as he's one week away from turning 30 and feels like he doesn't have enough to show for his existence. And as John pursues his dreams, he's got to deal with his friends, his family, his obsession with Superbia and all the other goals and aspirations that he has. And we have our movie. Let me tell you, I am so mad at myself for not watching this movie in 2021 because this would have easily been in my top three for that year. However, now that I have watched it, I can tell you with full confidence that this movie is really damn good. The excellent storytelling elements combined with the really catchy musical numbers make this a full-fledged excellent experience. And I'm not typically one for musicals, but this movie had me enthralled for the entire runtime. It's so much fun watching John Larson pursue his dreams and struggle to achieve his goals. The movie paints a really interesting picture of what it's like to be a starving artist who's living in New York City and trying to make it to the big stage. And it truly embodies just what it takes to be successful in that regard. And the entire cast showcases a ton of talent, especially in the vocal area of things. And the musical numbers are all delivered with purpose. And they help drive the plot along or convey certain messages within the movie. So let's start off with what I really enjoyed about this movie. Tick Tick Boom is ludicrously entertaining. There are stellar performances, especially from Andrew Garfield, really catchy music, musical numbers, and a riveting story that make this a complete and exciting experience. This movie has a consistent, steady, and natural cadence that sort of shifts from story and plotline to musical number without feeling too overbearing on one side or the other. You get a steady dose of John Larson's story, which has a lot of heart, followed by a really catchy musical number that really drives the points home. These musical numbers have a really great way of conveying what John and other characters are feeling in these gigantic moments. And you not only get this from John Larson, but also his best friend, Mike. Michael, who's a really great supplement to this movie. You not only get stellar acting and a great story, but you also get to hear some very talented people belt out some amazing music. You would be very hard pressed to find dull moments in this movie. Also, the relationship and friendship between John and Michael is extremely captivating. As a struggling artist, John has the loving support of his best friend Michael, who serves as an excellent juxtaposition to this movie. John, on one hand, lives a largely unstable, unsure life, but on the other hand, he's balanced out through Michael, who has a job, a steady income, income and enjoys the finer things in life. And the friendship not only serves as a great medium for conveying the film's most important messages, but it also serves as the emotional anchor. John and Michael's friendship is extremely believable, which adds a lot of stakes to the milestones that they endure throughout the film. It's easy to adore and empathize for both of them, and it makes them really attractive to follow on screen. And lastly, this movie has some stellar musical numbers that are not overbearing. As someone who doesn't particularly love musicals, I'm always nervous and apprehensive going into them because if all they do is sing, that's not really much of a great film for me. However, this movie's musical numbers managed to make me fall in love and get deeper into the story rather than the other way around. I enjoyed a lot of the songs and even immediately downloaded them on Spotify right after the movie. They're excellently written and showcase some stellar vocal talent. And along those lines, the movie strikes a really fine balance between plot and song, meaning that you'll get some dialogue throughout the film and then just when the big moments are coming to a head, they play a song in order to help drive the bigger point home. And that's great because it allows you to bask in the most significant points of the movie without just breezing by them way too quickly. Now, what did I not like so much about this movie? For me, the movie ended way too abruptly and I feel like it could have told more of John Larson's story. The majority of this movie is spent with John while he's writing Superbia, which is only his first musical in a line of musicals that he ended up writing. However, just when you feel like you're approaching the final third of the movie, it just kind of ends pretty abruptly and you feel a little bit wanting more. The film does such a great job of building momentum up to that point, only to feel like it just kind of leaves you high and dry all of a sudden, which was really disappointing. Because ultimately, there's still some loose ends to tie up, and it ties up those loose ends off screen or just through voiceover, which kind of feels a little lazy to me. It wasn't a big enough downer to ruin the film, but it keeps it from being a perfect film. Friends, in the end, I'm gonna have to give Tick Tick Boom a 9 out of 10. It's amazing, and I highly recommend watching it. It's on Netflix right now. Friends, have you seen Tick Tick Boom? If so, so what'd you think of it? You know what the comment section is. Let me know. Thanks so much for watching another Bankrupt Hippo movie review. If you like this, click right here if you'd like to see more. I've been Bryson. Until next time, have a great day.